Dry fasting is one of the most intriguing and controversial methods of inducing cellular renewal through a process known as autophagy. The term autophagy literally means self-feeding. It is the body's built-in mechanism for breaking down and recycling damaged cells, proteins, and other cellular debris that accumulate over time. Normally, autophagy runs quietly in the background, maintaining cellular health like a janitorial crew working late at night. But when the body is deprived of nutrients and water, the process intensifies, becoming a powerful tool for rejuvenation and repair. To understand how dry fasting boosts autophagy, it helps to first look at what happens in the body during fasting itself. When you eat regularly, your body focuses on digestion and energy storage. Glucose from food is converted to energy, and any excess is stored as glycogen in the liver and muscles. When you stop eating, the body gradually depletes its glycogen stores and shifts to burning fat for fuel. This metabolic switch signals the body to conserve energy and begin cleaning up internal waste. Fasting without water intensifies this switch because the body must extract water from within cells and from metabolic reactions, forcing deeper resourcefulness at the cellular level. In this state, every system becomes more efficient, and damaged or inefficient cells are broken down to harvest their components for energy or water. Autophagy becomes the body's survival mechanism and simultaneously its cleansing system. During dry fasting, the absence of water means the body cannot rely on external hydration. Instead, it turns inward to generate what is called metabolic water. This water is produced when fat is broken down into its basic components, releasing hydrogen and oxygen which combine to form water. This process is remarkably efficient, and desert animals such as camels depend on it to survive long periods without drinking. Humans have the same biological ability, though it is rarely activated in modern lifestyles filled with constant eating and drinking. This shift to producing internal water creates conditions that force the body to dismantle old or damaged cells, mitochondria, and misfolded proteins. These components are broken down to release usable molecules, including hydrogen, oxygen, and amino acids. The very act of creating internal hydration is inseparable from the destruction of weak or dysfunctional tissues. This is why dry fasting can be seen as an accelerator for autophagy. When water and food are absent, the body prioritizes survival through regeneration. Scientists first discovered autophagy in the 1960s, but it wasn't until the 1990s that its mechanisms began to be understood. The Japanese biologist Yoshinori Osumi was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2016 for his work revealing how cells recycle their components through autophagic vesicles. These vesicles engulf damaged organelles or proteins and transport them to lysosomes, which are like acid-filled recycling centers. There, the waste material is broken down and repurposed. This process plays a central role in longevity, immune function, and disease prevention. It helps remove precancerous cells, slows neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, and reduces inflammation by cleaning up dead immune cells. During fasting, the body's nutrient-sensing pathways especially MTOR and MPK, are altered. When food is abundant, MTOR is active, promoting growth and storage. When nutrients drop, MTOR shuts down and MPK is activated, stimulating autophagy and fat breakdown. Dry fasting takes this metabolic shift further. Because dehydration raises osmotic stress inside cells, it triggers stress response proteins and pathways that overlap with those involved in autophagy. The result is a synergistic effect. Fasting deprives the body of external fuel, while dehydration pushes it to recycle internal resources. Both signals together create an environment that maximizes cellular renewal. Another remarkable adaptation occurs in immune cells during dry fasting. Studies have shown that short-term fasting can rejuvenate the immune system by encouraging the destruction of old or damaged. White blood cells and stimulating the production of new ones when refeeding begins during dry fasting, this process may be even more pronounced because the body's priorities shift entirely toward preserving vital systems. The immune system essentially goes through a controlled reset, clearing out senescent cells and reducing chronic inflammation. This can explain why many people report a heightened sense of clarity and energy after a period of dry fasting. It is not mystical, it is biochemical. Got the brain also benefits from enhanced autophagy during dry fasting. When glucose levels drop, 
and fat metabolism increases, the liver produces ketone bodies, such as beta-hydroxybutyrate. Ketones are a cleaner energy source for the brain and can cross the blood-brain barrier easily. They also act as signaling molecules that further stimulate autophagy and reduce oxidative stress in neurons. The result is sharper cognition, better mood regulation, and increased neuroplasticity. Some researchers have even suggested that ketone-induced autophagy may protect against neurodegenerative diseases by clearing out misfolded proteins like beta amyloid and tau. The absence of water introduces another fascinating dimension. Cells under mild dehydration experience a process known as osmotic stress, which triggers heat shock proteins and other protective molecules. These proteins help stabilize cellular structures and assist in the proper folding of newly synthesized proteins. The result is a hormetic effect a term used to describe how short, manageable stress can strengthen the body by stimulating adaptive responses. Just as muscles grow stronger after being challenged by exercise, cells become more resilient after facing temporary dehydration. Dry fasting, when done properly, becomes a controlled stressor that upgrades cellular performance. However, this process must be approached carefully. Extended or improperly executed dry fasts can lead to dangerous dehydration, electrolyte imbalance, or kidney strain. The key lies in duration and preparation. Most practitioners of dry fasting recommend starting with intermittent cycles, such as 12 to 16 hours, then gradually extending to 24 hours or beyond. During these periods, the body experiences mild stress that triggers autophagy without tipping into dangerous territory. Once rehydration and refeeding occur, new cells and tissues rebuild stronger than before. This pattern of stress and recovery mirrors many other natural cycles that promote adaptation. From exercise to temperature exposure, autophagy does not only recycle damaged materials, it also contributes to metabolic efficiency. When mitochondria are recycled a process called mitophagy, the body eliminates inefficient energy producers and replaces them with newer, more efficient ones. This upgrade reduces oxidative damage, enhances energy production, and slows aging. In the context of dry fasting, metophagy becomes particularly active because the body must extract maximum efficiency from its remaining cellular resources. Some researchers even suggest that periodic dry fasting may extend lifespan by preserving mitochondrial health and reducing systemic inflammation. There is also a metabolic link between dry fasting and insulin sensitivity. When the body runs low on glucose and shifts to fat metabolism, insulin levels plummet. This rest period allows insulin receptors to regain sensitivity, improving glucose control once eating resumes. Over time, such fasting cycles can reverse early insulin resistance. One of the precursors to metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes, the autophagic cleanup of lipid droplets and damaged pancreatic beta cells contributes to this restoration of metabolic balance. Historically, Dry fasting is not new. Many spiritual traditions have long practiced it as a form of purification. The Ramadan fast in Islam, for example, prohibits both food and water from dawn to sunset. Eastern Orthodox Christianity, Judaism, and certain yogic practices also include dry fasting periods. While the ancient motivations were spiritual, modern science is uncovering the physiological wisdom embedded in these traditions. The sense of renewal and mental clarity often described after fasting, likely arises from enhanced autophagy and detoxification. The absence of both food and water temporarily shifts the body away from digestion and waste accumulation toward deep cellular maintenance. One of the most interesting hypotheses about dry fasting and autophagy involves the microbiome. The gut flora are highly sensitive to nutrient availability. During fasting, harmful or pathogenic bacteria that rely on constant feeding may die off, while beneficial species that thrive in scarcity proliferate. The mild dehydration of the digestive tract during dry fasting may further suppress overgrowth of yeast and anaerobic bacteria. When eating resumes, the gut environment is cleaner and beneficial microbes recolonize more efficiently. This microbial reset can have systemic effects on immunity, metabolism, and even mood since gut bacteria produce neurotransmitters like serotonin. Another overlooked aspect of dry fasting is the way it affects the lymphatic system. The lymph network is responsible for removing toxins and waste from tissues, but unlike blood, it does not have a pump. 
Its movement depends on breathing, muscle contraction, and fluid balance. During mild dehydration, osmotic pressure increases, pulling waste materials from tissues into the lymph for clearance. When hydration is restored after fasting, this accumulated waste can be flushed out more effectively. Thus, dry fasting may amplify the detoxification effects of subsequent rehydration. In a way, the thirst created by fasting primes the body for a deeper cleanse once water returns. The idea that stress can be therapeutic is a recurring theme in biology. Whether it's exercise, heat exposure, cold immersion, or fasting. All these forms of hormesis stimulate repair mechanisms. Autophagy is the cellular manifestation of hormesis, transforms adversity into renewal. Dry fasting represents one of the most intense, yet efficient triggers of this process. It compresses multiple stressors, nutrient deprivation, dehydration, and metabolic switching into a single, time-limited challenge. When balanced by adequate recovery, the result is a cellular renaissance. Critics of dry fasting often point to the risks of dehydration, and they are right to do so. Water is essential for nearly every biochemical reaction in the body, including those involved in detoxification. Prolonged or reckless dry fasting can lead to kidney stones, muscle breakdown, and cardiovascular stress. The key insight from research and experience is that intensity and duration matter. A short dry fast can be beneficial because it pushes the body just far enough to activate repair mechanisms without causing damage. Beyond a certain point, the stress becomes destructive rather than adaptive. This balance echoes the ancient medical principle of hormesis. The dose makes the poison. One fascinating area of current research explores how fasting-induced autophagy might be used in medical treatments. Cancer cells, for example, often rely heavily on glucose and have defective autophagy pathways. By inducing autophagy through fasting, healthy cells become more resilient, while cancer cells may become more vulnerable to chemotherapy or radiation. Some preliminary studies suggest that fasting before cancer treatment can reduce side effects and enhance the effectiveness of therapy. Similarly, autophagy may play a role in preventing or slowing neurodegenerative conditions like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's by clearing misfolded. Proteins that accumulate in the brain, the implications are vast, hinting at a natural therapeutic process that could complement modern medicine. From an evolutionary perspective, autophagy makes perfect sense. Early humans often face periods of scarcity and dehydration. The body evolved to survive and adapt to these challenges by cleaning house internally when resources ran low. In modern times, constant feeding and hydration prevent these ancient repair cycles from activating. As a result, cellular waste accumulates, contributing to aging and chronic disease. Dry fasting can be viewed as a way of reintroducing a natural rhythm of stress and recovery that our ancestors experienced regularly. It is less a biohack and more a restoration of biological balance. The subjective experiences reported during dry fasting heighten senses. Mental clarity, spiritual connection can be partly explained by biochemical shifts. Ketones enhance neurotransmitter balance and reduce neuroinflammation. Reduced insulin and glucose stabilize mood. The gut microbiome resets, influencing serotonin levels. Meanwhile, autophagy in the brain clears debris, improving synaptic communication. Together, these effects create a temporary state of heightened awareness and calm, often interpreted as spiritual awakening. The body and mind are not separate in this process. They are co-evolving through cycles of scarcity and renewal. In the end, dry fasting's relationship with autophagy is a story of balance and adaptation. Depriving the body of external resources forces it to rely on internal intelligence, awakening ancient mechanisms of survival and repair. Autophagy is not merely a metabolic process, it is an expression of life's ability to reorganize itself in the face of challenge. Through short, mindful bouts of dry fasting, we engage with this self-recycling capacity, giving ourselves permission to let go of the old and make room for the new. It is not a punishment, but a dialogue with the body's wisdom. A reminder that regeneration begins not from abundance, but from intelligent restraint.